Hey, this is Jason Clark here at South Dakota State University, and welcome to our webinar series on calculating nitrogen fertilizer rates for corn in South Dakota. This first one will be talking about yield goal estimations and how we calculate them. So come on, let's go ahead and get started. So first of all, when we look at the yield goal equation, for most of our fertilizer, we're going to be talking about the nitrogen one today, but this goes for a lot of them. It's this equation right here for nitrogen. And if we blow that up and kind of change the order about that we're going to be talking about them, this is what we see. We see that our yield goal times our 1.2 coefficient minus our soil test nitrogen value minus our legume credit if we have one, and then adding a no-till debit if we're using no-till is the equation that we used to determine our nitrogen fertilizer recommendations. The first part in this recommendation is the yield goal. And the yield goal is a very important thing to calculate because it's based on this value that we get our nitrogen recommendation. So the thing to ask about a yield goal is one of two things. Is it a goal where we're thinking, I want 300 bushels per acre? Or is it saying I can actually produce 200 bushels per acre corn in this field? So the question we have to ask ourselves is this, which is realistic? because we don't want a goal that we can't necessarily reach this year. We want a realistic goal of what we are most likely to reach or what our potential is for this coming growing season. So how do we calculate this realistic yield goal? There are several different ways, but the way I'm gonna show you today is the way that we commonly recommend. So first step is we're gonna gather yield data six to 10 years worth of it. And what I normally do is we take that field, we can divide it into zones and we'll get those last 10 years Step number two is we're going to identify those sites that are five plus years past the present, showing up here in blue, and we're going to add 10 bushels per acre to those sites. And we do that because we are commonly increasing our bushels per acre about two bushels per acre per year. So once we hit five years back, we need to increase those previous bushels per acre by 10 to get closer to what our five year average is, but still have that long term data to support our realistic yield goal. So once we add those 10 bushels per acre on those, we get numbers that look like this. Step three is we're gonna identify those high and low values. So here in 2018, we say we saw we had 164 bushels per acre, which was a really good moisture year, higher average yielding than normal. And then we have a 74 in 2012, which was a drought year. So we're gonna say that was below what we normally have. So we're gonna take those two values and we are going to delete them. And then after we've deleted the high and low values, and there might be more than one each, depending on your field and your years, the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna average those remaining yields in that low high delete category. And we see here that we end up with 131 bushels per acre of our average yield over the last 10 years when we delete the high and the low. Now there is a fifth step. And that is we take that 131 bushels per acre and we can increase it or decrease it by six to 10%. The default is to increase it by six to 10% because we're normally increasing yields from year to year. However, there might be reasons to decrease that yield potential. And one way to know what to do is to use the soil moisture at planting. If it's at field capacity, we're gonna say it's probably going to be a good year. We're starting with good moisture in the soil that seed's gonna be put in there, it's gonna imbibe that water, it's gonna get ready to germinate and grow quickly. However, if we have a poor soil moisture where we're rather dry when we plant, we're gonna say that yield potential is probably lessened because it's gonna take longer to get going and get germinated and to get that yield potential up. So in that case, we're gonna actually reduce our yield potential from the 131 down six to 10%. So depending on the situation that we choose, we get one of these two answers. We increase it, our yield goal is 144, we lower it, it's 118. And the number you choose between six to 10% is up to you. So if we look at these five steps, we first gather that yield data. Five plus years ago, we add 10 bushels per acre. We delete the high and low values. We average it. And then from there, we're gonna increase it or decrease it by six to 10%. You can default to increasing by 6% or you can alter it based on your soil moisture at planting. These are the six steps that we recommend using when determining yield goal for your respective fields. 
We hope this has been helpful, and as always, stay tuned for our next video to see how accurate these yield goal estimations are and have been in South Dakota over the past several years.